Hello everyone, I am Jesse Mason, and for today's episode of Teach Me, we'll be going on a little scientific adventure together. Today we'll be performing an interactive virtual experiment whose purpose is to use the scientific method in order to determine the contents and configuration of a little black box. You'll want to have a pencil and some paper handy to take notes, or as we scientists prefer to call it, data. Now, let's start out by looking at the equipment we'll be using. Here we have our little black box made out of cardstock. Frequently I'll be placing our black box on this little stand I made of Legos and rubber bands. That way it doesn't move around too much. Inside the black box, there are an unknown number of metal washers, just like this one here. And those metal washers are in an unknown arrangement. Throughout the entire experiment, the box will remain sealed. That's why I have a rubber band right here, so that no one, not even me, will take a peek at the contents. That way it's more like a real black box, like an atom or your mind. Now, let's take a look. Hmm. At first glance, there doesn't seem to be very much we can observe. Ah, uh, I better hold these rods lest they slip. Huh, that's funny. That's what scientists say, by the way, at the outset of a grand scientific adventure. Not Eureka, but, huh, that's funny. Now, what if one of these rods were suspending one of the washers? What a very interesting hypothesis! You know, a good what if makes a great hypothesis. Well, what sort of prediction could we make based on this fairly interesting hypothesis? Yes, we could posit if we pulled one of these rods, then we would hear a metal washer plunk to the bottom of the box. Very good, that's a very useful prediction. Now, if the result of our rod pulling experiment doesn't match our plunk prediction, that means we've disproved our hypothesis, which means we need to return to the hypothesis and revise it. If, on the other hand, the result of our rod pulling experiment does match our plunk prediction, that means we have proved our hypothesis. No, no. And we need to publish our results no, in a respectable no, journal. Like no, 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 no. Nothing in science can be proven, only supported. You know, Besides language, science is the most incredible tool we've ever discovered. But it can't tell us what's true about our world, only what's false. Keep that in mind while you journey. Okay, if the result of the experiment does match the prediction, then the hypothesis is supported, which means it needs to be retested with a new prediction experiment sequence. Retest or revise. Generally speaking, those are the only two outcomes of an experiment. And together they constitute the most important step in the scientific method, the recycle step. This infinite loop of returning to the hypothesis to retest and revise is not a bug in the system of science. It's a feature. It gives science its teeth. Teeth to tear away at the sinews of falsehood and cast them into the pig trough of scientific history. What's that? When are we done recycling? Why, never. Science is never done or settled. It's an ongoing process of discovery. Think of it as job security for scientists. Okay, now that we're armed with the scientific method, let's begin our quest by deducing the number of washers in the black box. How will we do this? By measuring the mass of an untested black box and comparing it to the masses of its components. Here are the masses of each black box component. Please note that our rods are not perfectly identical and neither are the washers, so their masses will only be close to these values. Okay, now we'll measure the mass of our untested black box using a triple beam balance. First thing we're gonna do with the triple beam balance is we're going to zero, zero it out. Looks like it needs adjustment. So I'm going to turn it this way. And we'll see what happens. Pretty close, just a little bit more. Perfect. 
Now we'll add our black box to the pan. Makes that go up. And then we need to adjust the riders, which we'll pull it back down. Now we're gonna address them one at a time, starting with the largest. So we'll go to the, we'll use the 100 gram rider and set it in the 100 position. If, okay, so the 100 gram rider is useless. We'll go to the 10th gram, I'm sorry, the 10 gram rider. And I'll keep moving that out until the balance drops. Okay, so 80 is too much, so I back off to 70. And lastly, we move our 10th gram rider. Let's see. Too much. Okay, so I'm going back. Let the magnetic damping slow the oscillations. And there you go. Now what we need to do is sum the masses that you see on the riders. So zero from the 100, 70 from the 10 gram rider, and I'll let you do this one yourself. Okay, go ahead and pause the video now and crunch the numbers to determine how many washers are in the black box. I'll wait for you right here. No, really, pause the video. All set? Good. Now that we're reasonably confident about how many washers are in the black box, let's see if we can make an observation before we draft our first hypothesis. I've placed a really good microphone right next to this box, so it should be kind of like ASMR for scientists. That's left and right. That's forward and backward. Well, we flip it. Why, hello there. Now we have a way of keeping track of our rods. Let's try this direction. And this one. Okay, quite a few observations for the making there. Now let's pause the video again and draft our first hypothesis. Feel free to keep the hypothesis as simple as a top-down sketch of the box, just a square, with three lines for the rods and circles for the washers. Go on, etch your sketch. I'll wait for you right here. All set? Are we ready to set sail on the sea of science and test our first hypothesis? Well, bon voyage, mes amis.